welcome back to my channel. Well, in today's uh, video, I have taken this dragonfly fishing vest and equipped it with uh, 12 pounds of, uh, uh, of gear, not all essential gear, but 12 pounds of gear in, a, in, a, in this vest. And uh, this is all gear that I would need or use on, a, on an overnight or a weekend outing. Uh, with each piece of the gear, we're going to lay it out on this blanket, have a look at uh, each piece, and also review the 10 C's of survivability to make sure I've got all the bases covered. Stick around. Hi guys, welcome back. Jeff Allen off the Green Iron. Okay guys, the purpose of this video is just to review this Dragonfly Performance Fishing product as I've used it for a little bug out bag. So we're going to go through the different compartments and just have a look at some of the equipment that I've uh, chosen to put in here. Again, this would be a bug out bag, throw in your truck, just uh, in case you have a of emergency or in the case you want to just do an overnight. little glow in the dark whistle off the front and these, uh, these retractable lanyards are super super handy and in no particular order the uh, there's an inflatable pillow well actually it's a liner out of one of these multi drink serving boxes for uh, hot beverages from a restaurant so I recycled that and I'll put a link up top with the, the review I did on that uh, candle lantern for some nighttime illumination this is made by Aurora Borealis, but there's many other companies out there. I'm not going to promote any one company over another. That's what, not what my channel is about. Uh, some snare wire. A very fine gauge snare wire for uh, setting snares or binding materials. Uh, some hand sanitizer and toothbrush and toothpaste. And there is still extra room in there for other little quick things you want to put in, multi-tool, whatever. Many things I wear on my belt, like the multi-tool and knife. And also a little flashlight. And this side is a compass. And this side is uh, another long lanyard. I usually clip that somewhere else. Uh, it has a Leatherman Micra tool. And in here I've got extra batteries. This is a little sealed container. Um, some fire starter. Uh, these are those fire starter straws. These straws have Q-tips inside, uh, dipped in Vaseline. And underneath that is another tin that I have put some uh, some of the sterno or the little kind of jelly fuel. And that is a bunch of uh, um, dryer lint tucked in there and soaking that up so again I like to reuse things that's a tin for my kids uh, silly putty and uh, made sense to repurpose that I also like to keep my batteries in a dry dry container now depending on where you are in the world you might have the use of a uh, yo-yo this is a yo-yo reel affixed with a uh, kind of little jig here. Um, great for that 24 hour fishing concept if you needed it and or snaring. This is a survival kit, a little tin kit uh, I put together. Uh, I think it's a wise idea to have that with you regardless. I mean this whole bag really suits that purpose but that's a little secondary kit. I'll provide the link up top for that. Um, I've got my own little fire straw here. It used to be one of those hot dog cookers from one of the dollar stores, but now I just cut the end off and you can blow through it and use it as a fire fire uh, fire straw to blow in your fire. 
and I've got my charge charger for my phone, solar pack. That's super handy. And these are just reflectors for the uh, the candle. But there again, there is some more room in there. So these are just a few things I put together in the, in the case that I wanted to to bug out or do that overnight spontaneously. Let's get all this put back in here. Okay, in the back in the outside compartment, I've got uh, my headlamp, headlight, and a small small saw super sharp and uh, again super compact and that's why I like uh, like like having a, a small saw bug uh, some element of bug spray or bug lotion rescue blanket mylar rescue blanket and about 20 20 yards maybe 15 10, 10 15 yards of uh, bank line I think that's all in the outside compartment all quick and easy that I can access. Inside compartment, I've got my Sawyer water, waterproof, water purification kit. And all the replacement parts that go along with that, if I should, should need it. Again, quite a bit extra space in there as well. Main compartment, we've got some uh, Oatmeal and some noodles. That's uh, at least two smaller meals. And I've left the packaging on these. Uh, this is the Soul Escape Bivy, and uh, I'll provide a link to my Super Shelter overnight. But I use this with my uh, my uh, overnight and my full size marmot sleeping bag, and uh, it was very very appreciated for sure and to go along with the sleep system again I could just use that on its own this is the sea to summit thermalite reactor extreme uh, this increases your your bag warmth up to about 15 extra degrees so it's a sleeping bag liner but in a warmer environment those two can be used together and that could be your sleep system for sure. I've got my container, my uh, cup with my butterfly handles, a little bit of toilet paper. This is my tent. This is uh, a world famous little small kind of uh, A-frame style tent but uh, for the size of it uh, I mean can't beat it. It's just a little bigger than a softball. Along with that is my homemade cord, my homemade uh, post for my tent, and this is a, a an old cane for the visually impaired that I modified into a collapsible rod for my tent. Very uh, very lightweight, very sturdy, and that is the uh, basically the takes over for the walking stick that you would use for the shelter. In the back of my kit is my cook system. This is the my takedown grill. Again, I can provide a link to this. This is a packable grill that I made from uh, old toaster oven grates and a piece of threaded rod. I'll provide the link up top to that. And always just an aluminum, this is a toaster oven aluminum tray. Uh, you can do any number of things, can catch water, uh, use it as a plate, use it over the fire on top of the grill to fry something, uh, and it weighs nothing. Very weighty, very light. This is another backup. I just threw it in here in case my Sawyer, whatever, lost it, or I just wanted to go for a day walk. This is the world's smallest filter in a straw. This is a straw that you just uh, made by Glacial Stream and you just drink right out of the water. Uh, very much like the life straw you've seen probably advertised. In the back, which is also something that's super lightweight, I'll just have to be careful I don't burn anything with this. This is one of those magnifying lenses 
and uh, it's uh, super powerful. If I'm not careful, I can probably. I'm not sure if you can see that, but um, with with very little effort, um, it, uh, <laughs> you can start things running with that. So on a day like today, this would be super super handy. Last thing on the bottom is uh, an air mattress. Okay, this one's a nice nice size. Again, I'm not promoting any brands right now, but that's a, a great playable air mattress. So I've got my, uh, certainly all these pieces. I think I have everything covered as far as uh, 10 C's of survivability. Let's uh, return to the board and make sure I have everything checked off. Okay, we're gonna have a look at my pack breakdown here and double check before uh, we head out if we have all the 10 C's of survivability covered. This is a list uh, I want to give credit to uh, Dave Canterbury, Pathfinder School. Uh, this is a good list to, to remember 10 items which are essential in uh, certainly any outing, but in any uh, camping or um, kind of a field bag situation. As we go through the list, we're going to check off each of these pieces to make sure we have all our bases covered and all our tendencies looked after. Number one, cutting tool. I always carry a cutting tool on me. I carry at least one. I'm carrying a neck knife. Uh, even my keys have a saw and a, uh, a knife right on the, right on my keychain all the time. I also will have a saw. So we had a look at the, uh, the saw that's in our pack. I've got a backup blade in my survival tin. And again, if I if you didn't already check that out, check that link out. There's a whole uh, DIY survival tin link. I'll try to provide the up, uh, link up top. I always have my multi-tool on me. Right now, I'm carrying uh, an old, old Gerber. I've had this for probably 15, 20 years. It's never let me down. So that's, uh, that's always on my person for sure. Um, if you choose to carry another knife, a folder knife in a pocket, you can. These two are pretty, uh, two unique ones I have. This is the uh, Kershaw Speed Safe, I think it's called. And uh, kind of a raker blade, Galene design, super, uh, super cool. Um, sometimes you might have another one, just a backup. So there's a little, little clip here, and this knife opens up like this. I think this is called the uh, hole-in-one, the Hitchcock hole-in-one by CRKT. Yeah, so pretty uh, pretty unique little knife that can be clipped on and clipped onto a belt loop or anywhere else. So we definitely have cutting tools covered. Combustion. I got a ferrule rod on right on my belt right now. I have a, uh, a lighter that I normally carry in my pocket. I have a second lighter in my survival tin. Uh, I have the magnifying lens. I have a lens, uh, I believe, on my compass. I have flint and steel in my survival tin, I believe. We definitely have combustion covered. Cover. Uh, I don't have extra body cover so much, but we do have a number of pieces to cover us up, including the sleeping bag liner, the bivy and certainly the tent. These are all more than required. Uh, a lot of people will just carry a tarp. Um, I'm waiting for a new one to arrive right now. So, um, but actually, this this whole tent uh, collapses down smaller than my my existing tarp. So, I threw that in for cover. What else? Container. We've got our uh, cup. Again, that stainless cup can be. Uh, Put right on the right in the fire to boil. Uh, right now, I'm missing the lid for it, but uh, usually I'd have a lid with that. Uh, this can serve as a container. That pie plate, that fryer, that uh, frying pan, water collection. It uh, can be really multi-purposed and it's super super light. So we do have enough for containers. Cordage. Everything I carry always has a little element of cord on it already cord is existing throughout my kit for sure, but I did have the, the bank line pre-rolled into, onto the, 
Uh, this is just an old phone clip. Uh, I could actually just clip that on the side of my pants and still have that bank line with me. But that was just me repurposing a phone clip. But uh, here's our, our cordage. Cordage, check. Candle. I actually showed you a candle. And candle also means some element of, of lighting. So we have the uh, candle we showed you, we have the flashlight, and um, obviously our headlamp for sure. Cotton. Uh, cotton, quite often that's uh, an element of a bandana. Um, often you can be, that can be wore around your neck, uh, like a shemog or uh, any kind of a bandana. I have extra cotton in my kit and again the big use for cotton is not so much to wear often cotton is called death cloth in the, uh, in the wilderness but cotton cotton material uh, for example denim can be cut up into the smaller swatches and charred and that's a perfect way to make some charred cloth uh, another uh, fire starting and combustion tool compass we had the little silver compass again it's nothing uh, very elaborate but uh, Quick and easy way to, to get your bearings is, is important. And really this is just a starter, silver compass, but uh, give me a bearing north, south, east, west. That's, that's really all I need right now for, uh, for where I'm going. Cargo tape. I do have a little bit of cargo tape uh, in my survival tin. Uh, again, uh, the provided the link before but um, that's uh, that's always handy to have and one of the things people don't remember uh, they can use cargo tape for is some element of, uh, of a band-aid or to hold uh, the edges of a large wound together and then you actually stitch the tape and pull the wound closed so that's probably why that's there also the uh, if you ever were to puncture puncture something part of your kit tent uh, whatnot you could actually try to patch it with that and Canvas needle. By canvas, they just mean a stiff uh, sewing needle that can be used on some of the he heavier, uh, heavier fabrics. Again, that's right in the tin, uh, and that survival tin is uh, <coughs> super handy and super important. It's just. Oh, I also have cordage on the, uh, the yo yo reel. And there's again so many other redundant pieces in here. Candy tins, there's a sewing needle right on top, some extra cordage, lighting device, uh, there's my fire steel wrapped with my, my tape, and probably most everything on that list might be actually in this container. Interesting. Other than cover, I probably have all of those items, the 10 C's of survivability in this uh, survival tin. So that's actually another, another space. You don't need a large pack to make sure you've got your bases covered. I was trying to explain to uh, to my boys uh, these 10, uh, 10 C's of survivability and some of the interesting things that they came up with starting with C uh, are very applicable but they may not be uh, necessarily survival items. So one of the ones that they came that uh, they came up with was we call it comforts and uh, an example of comforts could have been the uh, uh, the bug spray um, toilet paper toothbrush toothpaste those kind of pieces uh, they would be certainly comforts not necessary to survivability but uh, certainly comforts to uh, to start shredding Another C that they're big big fans of when we go out is some element of, of snacks. Uh, calories, easy calories can be important, but uh, definitely having a plan for where you're going to acquire those calories is uh, certainly important. The concept of cooking and how 
how are you going to do that? Uh, very closely related to the, the idea of a container. Certainly you would love to see a container double um, as uh, kind of a cooking device. So cooking is just another C word that reminds you of uh, those options and what you're planning to, uh, to use for cooking. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. Today we took a uh, dragonfly fishing vest that you can see some of these fishermen wear and outfitted to be a bug out bag. Uh, we've looked at the tendencies of survivability and some options that uh, you may have for those. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list and by no means um, to make one of these bug out bags of your own or take into account the tendencies of survivability they do not have to be um, purchased kind of in big name brands. Uh, if you stayed away from some of the name brands and just had something that would do the trick, uh, you're well on your way to understanding the, the bigger picture and, and seeing that it's not going to be so-and-so's tarp or so-and-so's paracord or whatever. It's how you're able to use the equipment you do have and in time, upgrade only if necessary. Uh, many of my kits, as you, as you saw today, uh, I do not boast a number of name brands other than some of the, the most uh, most important, most recent pieces that I did add uh, over time. But for years before, uh, I've always made do. I find that adage, uh, improvise, adapt, and overcome uh, in my day-to-day -day life. I, I try to kind of live by those, uh, those words, words of wisdom. Important that you you find your way and uh, uh, kind of continue to learn along your journey in uh, bushcraft and campcraft. I'm Jeff Allenhoff at Gridiron. Thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, 